<laughs> Hi, everybody. Welcome to another Chats with Chaudhry. Welcome to part five of my ongoing series with Brooke Adele Tonic, where we're talking about all things proteomics. The sun is shining here in Surrey today, so it's a lovely day. I'm delighted to be joined by Lucy Woods, who is the uh, metabolomics and L lipidomics business unit manager at Brooke Adele Tonics. And we're going to be talking all things metabolomics today. So, Lucy, how are you? I'm really good, thank you. How are you? Very, very good. So um, you're in Notting Hill and it looks like you're shining where you are this morning it as is. well. It is. It's going to be a nice weekend, I think. I think so. See, so when you sign in to watch Chats with Children, you don't only get to learn about fantastic physical <laughs> science, you get a weather forecast as well. So isn't that brilliant? So Lucy, the last time you and I met was in Florence for the ICMS. Uh, yeah, in sunny Florence. Yeah, yeah. Um, at IMSC at the... Um, at the international conference there yeah yeah and you just actually launched the tim's tough pro uh just the year before so and you were a product manager mm -hmm. there so i know your job title's changed so congratulations on that so so tell me what's happened since uh, the conference so thanks um so yeah indeed when i was at imsc i was the product manager of the tim's tough platform and since then i've changed to the business unit manager of um uh, metabolomics and lipidomics and um, what I remember of that conference, there was a lot of excitement surrounding the Tim's Tough Pro because it was the, uh, quite a new system and it, we could really see within the community the excitement um, that was around uh, the launch the year before and the recognition of what this system could do. And so in this new role where I focus on metabolomics and lipidomics, I wanna show the community um, in metabolomics the benefit of using the Tim's top and utilizing this extra dimension of separation. Fantastic. Well, let's talk about uh, metabolomics and lipidomics. And can you talk about what is a common workflow within those areas? Mm -hmm. And so I think I would split the common workflows up into two, so into targeted and non-targeted methods. So if we start with the targeted methods, they're kind of easier, um, as the researcher already knows, which biological pathway that they want to, to map and which metabolites um, that they want to monitor. And for this workflow, the main aspect is that you need to have a standard um, so that you can ensure accurate quantitation of these uh, metabolites. And the second workflow, non-targeted, this one is, is much more difficult. So we call this a discovery workflow in that the researchers uh, don't know exactly what they're looking for, but they're looking for unexpected changes within the metabolism. And so you want to detect everything within that sample. And I'd split this into three major components. So the first being the identification of those metabolites and the second being looking what's changing. So if you take, for example, a healthy patient group and a, an unhealthy um, or diseased patient group, then you want to look for changes within the metabolism between these two different groups. And to do this, you need to use statistical tools. Um, the final aspect is the interpretation of the data. So once you've identified these metabolites or, or biomarkers of interest, um, then you want to know what else is, is happening within that organism. So what other, what changes are happening within that uh, metabolic pathway and what's causing this change within the organism. Right. And that obviously generates lots and lots of data. Yeah. So what are the great challenges that people have when they're trying to do metabolomics analysis? So within the data, you measure a series of peaks. So each peak is a mass. As For this, we're using a mass spectrometer and is representative of a different metabolite. Now, every metabolite doesn't um, give one single peak. So what happens is the solution um, that you inject into the mass spectrometer is full of salts. These are very sticky and can stick to the metabolite and very fragile metabolites can fall apart um, when you introduce them to the system if you're not careful. And so what happens if you have multiple peaks for one single metabolite and what you need is software that can combine all of these peaks into what we call um, a single feature which represents a single metabolite. And so in order to do this, you need quite powerful software. And we're very fortunate at Brooker in that we have our own software development team um, who have developed a software called Metaboscape that uh, does this combination um, of, of peaks into features. And so the scientist no longer needs to be concerned with the complexity of the data. It's all performed by the software automatically. 
And once you have these features, you then still need to identify what is the metabolite that they belong to. And in doing this, um, so there's, we usually use um, a library approach. So you can match all of your peaks versus standards that have been measured into a library. And for this, we utilize the, the Metlin library, which contains thousands of different um, compounds. And for this library, what you need is you need to match several different attributes of this metabolite. So you have the accurate mass, you have the isotopic pattern, and then you have the fragment um, spectra. So you need to be able to acquire a lot of fragmentation information from each of these metabolites. Now with the TIMSTOF platform, you have this additional um, quality and it's called the collisional cross-sectional value. And this is a measure of the shape of the metabolite. So if you have a, a small compact metabolite or a larger one, then they have different shapes, right? So even though they have the same mass, you can measure this difference in shape. And you can use this to compare to library values um, or even compare to predicted values, which say that this metabolite that you're expecting to be within your sample has this shape or the CCS value. And you can use this to give you an additional level of confidence. Right, that's good. So that's a, there's a lot of information there. So obviously it just shows the, the power of the software really. And obviously software is now so important for researchers in everything they do in terms of helping them analyze the data. Now, uh, we've been hearing a lot about the success of Tim's Tough Pro at Hooper this mm -hmm. week. You know, mm -hmm. you know, obviously there's been a lot of case studies there. So how do you utilize the speed and sensitivity of the Tim's Tough Pro uh, for metabolomics and lipidomics? Mm -hmm. And so we utilize it in a similar way um, to, to what we do for proteomics. So you can imagine to be able to identify more, you need to be able to fragment more of these compounds. And with the TIMS Top Pro, we use a acquisition mode called PASA. This stands for Parallel Accumulation Serial Fragmentation. And here you can fragment five to 10 times more compounds than using a conventional mass spectrometry technique. And um, this is particularly useful because you can do all this in a single run. So in a single um, 15, 20 minute run, you can fragment more than 70% of, of the metabolites within that run. Um, now, there are other approaches which try and increase the number of fragment spectra, but in the past, this has been that you take a sample and you inject it multiple times. So in doing this, with each run, you can fragment different metabolites, but you have a huge time and cost um, expense there. So with passive, you can really increase your throughput by doing this all within a single run. And this is... Uh, useful for, for lipidomics, because for lipidomics, you really rely on these fragment spectra to, to identify your lipid. And this is because lipids consist of a number of isobaric and isomeric lipids. So these are extremely similar masses. Um, luckily, they have different shapes. So for using the CCS dimension, we can separate out these different lipids. We can fragment them separately and we can um, acquire these characteristic lipid fragments. And what's also um, integrated into Metaboscape is for lipids, you don't need to rely on library values. So we've incorporated what's called a rule-based annotation where you can um, sort of predict what fragments would be expected for different types of lipid. So from this, you can do, uh, you can assign multiple different lipid classes without the need for a reference spectra. Fantastic. So I actually caught up with Mike Easterly, who heads up your imaging business unit. Uh, my second chat's with Chowdhury for Brooker, actually. And we were talking about the yeah. special omics approach. So how mm -hmm. does the metabolomics and lipidomics workflow sort of mm -hmm. link in with what he was talking about in special omics? Um, so I think I'll start for those who haven't seen Mike's talk, what exactly spatial omics is. So spatial omics is where we uh, link changes in the, in, the, in the distribution of metabolites and lipids on tissue with respect to their spatial orientation, and we link that to biochemical information. And this workflow is made possible on the Timstoff Flex platform. So this came a year after the Timstoff Pro, and is where we integrated a, a high, um, a high resolution, high throughput MALI source onto that Tim's Top Pro system. So with this, you have the flexibility that you can analyze 
say lipids on tissue, and you can also analyze complex lipids from solution. So what a workflow would look like is you would look for lipid signatures on the tissue, and lipids are particularly of interest because they are indicative of a new, numerous different disease states. So by mapping these different lipid signatures, you can identify healthy versus diseased areas of tissue. And what you can then do is you can do this complex characterization using the LC passive um, part of the instrument so that you can um, give an in-depth characterization as to what lipids are actually being observed on the surface of this tissue. And from that, you can link it to the biochemical pathways and you can also link it to the metabolic pathway. So you can then go back and look for any, um, any linked metabolism, which you can see on the surface of that tissue. All right. Okay. So if you, uh, I know we, we were talking about HUPA this week, but actually there's lots of other events coming up. For example, next week, there's Metabolomics 2020. And I understand mm -hmm. that you guys, obviously, Brooke, have got a big presence there as well. So what can people expect to see if they attend that conference next week? Yeah, so we've um, spent quite a lot of time planning our workshop. Um, so our workshop will take place um, on the first day of the conference. And this is going to be, um, well, this is um, organized with our collaborators from the Australian National Phenome Center. And we have two speakers. So we have Professor Jeremy Nicholson and we have Dr. Nicola Gray, and they're both based uh, within the Australian National Phenome Center. So for those of you who aren't aware of this Phenome Center, it's one of the biggest um, um, centers of its type and has a wide range of equipment ranging from Bruker benchtop QTOFs to our high resolution MRMS systems to NMRs. And this center was set up um, last year and has now been utilized fully for COVID-19 research. So it's fantastic because using such a wide range of platforms means that you can really look for a wide range of different metabolites. So at the Australian National Phenome Center, what they've done is they've, um, they've come up with a highly distinctive metabolic model which categorizes COVID-19. And they've done this using a combination of different mass spectrometry and different NMR approaches. And in doing this, they've characterized um, COVID-19 as what they're calling a mosaic disease. So this means that it, it's made up of a large number of components and they cover many different networks and many different organ systems. And this is one of the reasons why we see such a varied range of symptoms with people who are infected with COVID-19. And this research can be used to not just improve the prognosis of COVID-19, but also to look deeper into what's been called long COVID. So these are the long-term health implications of COVID-19. And from this paper, um, you can see um, different metabolites. So in particular, different amino acids, which are, show markers of damage to the respiratory system, to the cardiovascular system, and to the liver. And so by tracing these different metabolites, you can, um, you, you can start to set up different clinics which can be based around the world where you can trace these metabolites and improve the prognosis of long COVID and help to mitigate the long-term effects of this, um, of this infection. Well, that's really, I mean, that is very interesting. And we can only wish the professor and his team lots of mm -hmm. success with that research because, you know, long COVID is becoming more and more uh topical if you like or in the news as more and more as more research is going into it so we wish mm -hmm. them the success of that and if people do want to know about that conference and there will be a link above this video where yeah. you can register for the conference and the user discussions uh so lucy that's all that's left for me to say is thank you very much for taking time out to teach me all about metal I was doing so well, metabolomics, <laughs> and, I got, I, and I get it wrong right at the end. But, I was, but thank you for actually helping to pronounce metabolomics because we couldn't do that at the beginning of this interview. So thank you very much. And thank you to me all about that and lipidomics. It was really, really interesting. If people want to know more, they can uh, find out more through the link to the conference. But where else can they find oh, more information? Which you've, got a, you've the, got a webinar, haven't you? Yeah, for the, for the lipidomics, if you want to learn more about that, then um, we have a webinar on, on the 25th of November. And... I'll also put a link to that within the chat. So this goes, this shows you this rule-based annotation that can be used and how it works and its utilization to uh, the C elegans in this case, which is a, a model for to, um, 
to find out more about aging so well another interesting topic which affects us all so i'm sure yeah. so again that link will be above the video as well so you can sign into that so and also there will be a link to the brooker website as well so again you can uh, look at the white papers and other articles that they've got around the topic that will be in the video post as well so uh, lucy thank you very much for your time i know you're very very busy thank so you. thanks for taking time out to do this with me thank you no, for watching thank you as well no no it's a pleasure and thank you all for watching as always stay well and stay safe thanks a lot bye bye Bye.